What's up guys, welcome back. So it's been a little while since I filmed a little makeup tutorial. I'm so nervous. I haven't like been on camera very much lately. I feel like the whole world is just kind of weird right now. I don't know how else to describe it other than weird. I don't even really know how to feel. Obviously my life hasn't been affected too much with the whole self-isolation and quarantine kind of situation. It's just really hard to get motivated right now and it's kind of a scary time. I've obviously lost a lot of, well, it's not obvious, but I have lost some work. A lot of brands aren't really booking any influencers at the moment. It's a little bit scary. Like, I don't know if I have any money coming in in the next month other than like a few really small payments here and there. So it's just, it's a really weird kind of time. So anyway, I really wanted to sit down today and just film a normal video and just kind of feel a little bit like myself again. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to achieve the Foxy Bella Hadid style of eye, her eyebrow kind of routine. This is not exactly her eyebrow routine, but it's kind of the routine that I've been doing to kind of mimic like her foxy eye and just that really botoxy swooped kind of look and especially in this time of you know botox deprivation i have not had my botox done and i'm missing it i have this one wrinkle right here it's actually an indent like i can feel a divot from frowning so much my mom has the same one it's just where i frown and that is where i personally get botox because I don't want to have a big frown line on my face. I look grumpy all the time when I'm really happy. I also like to get it here, you know, to give it the whole lift thing. But I do have a little trick that is happening in my hair that I will talk about in the video um, that really does fake the whole lifted kind of model Botoxy look. But I thought it would be really great to share it with you guys if you are too scared to get Botox or you can't go and get Botox right now with everything going on. I feel like this is a really fun little way to kind of trick everyone into thinking that you are just beautifully baby smooth. We are gonna jump straight in. I'm gonna be chugging on some water throughout this video because I got this bottle recently and it has the times on it. So like you're meant to drink two of these a day and the times are from 8 a.m. till 12 p.m. and then 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. And it is 12 p.m. right now and I haven't even finished my first bottle. So I really need to be drinking more water. I am so, so bad with it. So the first product that I love to use on my skin to give a really beautiful, dewy and youthful look, Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. Primer and moisturizer in one. Love this. It's amazing. Gonna put it on my face. And then whatever's left over, I always just rub into my hands because it basically is like a moisturizer and it just feels so nice. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit because I feel like you guys are so far away. Also, what do you guys think of my new background? I changed it yesterday. We took the doors off my closets because I just had like four lots of doors but two closets behind me and it was driving me insane because I couldn't move my furniture around the room in certain ways because the doors would open into it and it was just so annoying. So I feel like it's so much more functional this way. I don't know, I kind of I like the little closet situation behind me, but let me know what you guys think. The foundation that I've been loving at the moment is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. I'm obsessed with this. This is my favorite foundation ever. Packaging is very loud. It's like, foundation. I feel like it's yelling at me. This side's so nice and calm and relaxing. And then this side's like, put the fuck on your face, bitch. I use the shade 270C, which is a very olive kind of tone. My tan is coming off at the moment. It looks absolutely tragic. My hands are always the first to go. This isn't like a loving tan shade. When I use loving tan, I have to use something a lot more warm, but this is really nice and cool for when I use um, Saint Tropez or like Bondi Sands, which I honestly prefer on me. I think they look a little bit more natural. My brush I've been loving at the moment is the Pat McGrath Labs foundation brush. You guys can see it's a really olivey, like cool tone. My face tends to go a lot more pink once my foundation settles. So this ends up being such a good color. And I feel like it just neutralizes the redness in my face. And I just really, really like the color for my fake tan. The nicest foundation I've ever seen. I love it so much. The next step that I like to do is I do my concealer. I use like four concealers because I'm a psychopath. The first one that I love to use is my little Charlotte Tilbury uh, color correcting concealer. This one is like a salmon kind of shade. I use it on the dark circles underneath my eyes. It just helps neutralize them and I think it is such a must-have. You guys can see like how much of a difference that makes. That's pretty much that. That's my first layer of concealer. Then I really love to mix the Born This Way 
sculpting concealer. And then I mix it with just whatever concealer, the other concealer I'm using at the moment. So the reason I use this is because it's like hella full coverage and it's really light and bright. Lately I've been taking my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer or I take my Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer, which I'm going to use today. This one's really creamy, but it's a little bit more peachy toned. And this one's kind of matte. So mixing them together just makes it a little bit more flattering underneath my eyes, not too drying. And I just really love the combo. I like to let my concealer dry. And then that way when I blend it out, it's just more full coverage. It stays exactly where I need it. Pretty much going to mix those two concealers again and go straight over the tails of my brows. I like literally have no hair there anyway. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing is I'm covering up these up so I can make my brows like a little bit less arched and more straight and like, like Spock, you know? So while that's drying, I then go in with my Benefit 24 hour brow set eye gel, eye gel, eyebrow gel, and I just brush up all the hairs at the front of my brow because I like to have a really laminated brow look. I don't like to let it sit for too long, otherwise I'll end up with like a weirdly bright face in those areas. What you can do and what I've done today is I've done a little tiny ponytail at the back of my hair and that is really pulling my face back. I've basically given myself a facelift. I have hair extensions in my hair so I can't show you guys very well but just here underneath these extensions I've grabbed these, pe these pieces of hair and pulled them back really tight on both sides and I've tied them up with a little tiny elastic. I know it's ridiculous but it works. And it honestly looks really cool in photos. It's a lot easier if you're already doing like a ponytail. Such a good little trick and it definitely fakes the look of Botox when you have not had it done in quite a while. So I'm going to start drawing on my actual brows now. I love using the Benefit Cub Brow. I use the shade number five, which is hella dark. Way too dark for me. It's the perfect shade for drawing on actual hairs. I just use it really lightly and I get a bit on there and I wipe it off and make it really skinny and like smushed and then I go in and I draw little tiny hairs on in the brow shape that I'm after so my brows really not that much higher but naturally like where my brow tattoo is it goes down here so instead I've just kind of lifted it up it just gives like the appearance of like a more lifted kind of eye look you get a lot more brow space and I just really really love how it looks this color actually blends in so well with my actual brow hairs, which is why I love it. And that's such a big tip from me is if you're struggling to draw on individual hairs and have them look like hairs, go darker with them and just do it a lot lighter. And I feel it looks actually like brow hairs. Just don't fill it in like a block brow. If you're just drawing individual hairs, going darker is like such a good trick. I just had to close my blinds a little bit because my camera is overheating. I'm scared it's gonna explode so hopefully the lighting's not too shit now. I'm going to use my Huda Beauty Tantor in the shade Fair. I love this shade for contouring and I love doing a little bit of cream contouring because I just feel like it's so flattering and natural looking. And I also go underneath my chin and I do a little bit on my nose. I'm gonna properly contour my nose though which i will show you guys once there's not much left on my brush then i go back in and just blend out my cheekbones really just try and hide the chub i'm like right on this this thing never used to have this fucking chin i can tell you that i'm offended i'm going to contour my nose if i dip in right where my bump is and then the reason I come out kind of like in the shape of a triangle is because it dips in here and then bumps out and then this dips in. So this bit is kind of like pinched in. So if I follow that line, it's going to look extra crooked and skull wiggly. But if I kind of bring it back out, it kind of tricks the eye into thinking my nose is a little bit straighter than it is. Can't wait till I can get a nose drop, but um, Corona's kind of put that on hold because it's not fucking broke. <laughs> thought this year was the year I actually have I know this is like not everyone's cup of tea so not everyone's gonna be like pleased to hear it but I already announced on my Instagram that I had booked in my consultation to get a nurse job it's what I've wanted for like the last 10 years definitely put a lot of thought into it and I was totally gonna like film it and everything for you guys not film getting the nurse job but like 
film the process and like a vlog of like afterwards and stuff. I think like elective surgeries have all been canceled at the moment. I just don't know what's gonna happen like money wise. Like I was still gonna go to the consultation if they were open and um, just get it done at like a later date or I was gonna postpone the consultation and get it done at a later date. But I just don't even know if it's like feasible money wise anymore because it's a lot of money. Really didn't anticipate for this whole thing to like be happening. I'm just gonna go in and like lightly buff the edges of that contour. I'm gonna start blending out this concealer that has now set. I like to bring this up onto the sides of my nose just to meet where that contour is. And then with my foundation brush, I will just kind of go over the edges of that concealer. I'm just going over my under eye concealer now. And then I'm gonna go in and set my under eyes now because we finished with the concealer. For my under eyes, I love my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder because it's like so brightening. And I just press this in. I also use it to set my lids really lightly. And I go down the sides of my nose with it too. I wouldn't use this anywhere else on your face because I feel like it would probably have flashback. So now we're moving on to concealer number four, which I know seems insane. I really don't use too much of this, but it's just like a highlighting kind of stick. So this is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter Light Boost. And I literally just go down the center of my nose. I try and do it even. Kind of bring the tip of my nose up a little bit higher. And now I'm going to set the rest of my face. So... That's pretty much it for all my contouring. I'll do a little bit of bronzing after, but that's it for the four concealers and the contouring. This powder is the NARS Beach Pressed Powder. Honestly, one of my favorites. I have hit pan. I've had this going for such a long time now. I like to press this into my skin. Hey, don't chew my chair. I just use a nice big fluffy brush. I love using pressed powders. I find that they just kind of maintain the color of your foundation rather than like a translucent powder that kind of give you like a white cast. So I'm gonna do my eyes now because I feel like that is like the focus of this video, like the brows, the snatch, the eyes. I'm really liking these two Fenty palettes at the moment. These are their Snap eyeshadow palettes. I'm using palettes one and five. This one is the neutral palette. This one is the peach palette. Peach is my favorite. It is so pretty. I like to mix these two shades here. Oh, they have names. Peach Me and Butter Rum. Butter Rum? Butter Rum. Yeah, Peach Me and Butter Rum. Oh, that's not the brush I wanted. Where did that brush go? And I'm using my Sigma F, no, E35. My God, I need to eat. <laughs> I can't even think right now. So I like to keep these colors on the outer portion of the eyes and I try not to blend too much into the inner corner. I'm kind of just following the shape of the eyebrow and i also do it on the outer corner and wing it out a bit as well so i kind of just want this to be like an all over kind of peachy glow on the eyes i also do the teeniest tiniest little bit just on the outer corner of my under eye i don't like to do too much because this can make your eyes look more round i'm just gonna jump in with the shade shoot your shot it's a little bit more like blushy sort of toned and I guess that's like the idea with soft glam looks is you just really want the colors that are on your face to be tied in with the colors on your eyes. And just everything looks really seamless and beautiful. And kind of just mixing those three shades together and just getting like a really beautiful overall like dusting. This is like my favorite way to do my eyes. because it's just so pretty and so soft and it just ties in so well with the rest of your face. I feel like it's a lot easier if you do like your bronzer and your blush first, but because I do this look all the time, I already know the products I like to use, so nothing really changes. If it is your first time trying it out, I would do like your face first, get like your base looking how you want it to and then match your eyes to it. So that's kind of like the undertone and the kind of like transitional base. And then I'm going to go in this palette and I'm going to put just a little smidge of this in my crease just to make it a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a little bit of like a liner kind of moment. Just on a little flat kind of brush. This is an E25. Love this little brush because it's kind of like tapered, but it's still fluffy. I'm just going to take a little bit of that brown and just run this right into my crease. Helps if you look forward when you do it or look kind of like up because you'll see where your eyelid stops and then just go like right above the crease of your lid. And then that way, when your eyes open, you'll still see the crease. I also put a really small amount of this right on the outer corner. 
I'm going to jump back in with that brush that we used to build up all those colors and just blend everything out. It should blend really easily because we did put such a beautiful transition down and it stops the brown from getting too warm as well. Like I feel like it just really beautifully creates like a shape to the socket of your eye. So now for the key part of this look, which I feel like is the kind of smoky winged liner that just really makes your eye look so much more cat eye shaped. I'm going to take this shade, which is Affogato. I would ideally use an angled brush, but I don't have a clean one and I can't find the one that I usually use, but this is the E15 Flat Definer from Sigma. It's just a little flat brush. It's not angled. It's just straight across, but it'll get the job done. But if you have like an angled brow brush or eyeliner brush, that would be ideal. So I just kind of like to stamp it. I don't like to take mine up too much because I feel like it makes my eyes look crazy. So basically just creating eyeliner with eyeshadow. I know that looks like super trash right now, but I'm going to blend it and it'll be like so fine. You can also do the inner corners of your eyes, which you guys would have seen I did in the last makeup tutorial that I filmed and posted. Honestly, I don't like to do this too much. If I do, I do a really, really light amount. I don't want it to look too like eyelinery. I'm just gonna smudge out that liner. If you get a little bit too much on your eyelid, you can just take a concealer brush, rub over the eyeshadow, and I just feel like it fixes it up really quick. Same with like if your wing is a bit too smudgy, like if you're not great at blending like me or you're just in a rush, I feel like it's a really quick way to just like clean it up. I'm going to jump in with the shade Bellini Baby, which is this shimmery shade in the peach palette and I'm going to pop this on my inner corners. I feel like this really makes your eye look like pointy. Just what we're going for. We want pointy eyes. The way I do my eyeliner is I just literally do the very outer corners. Stop like halfway or like a little bit further back. I probably could have stopped a little bit further back, but honestly it just changes every day that I do it. You just want it to be like the very outer corner and the very inner corner. And that's gonna trick the eye into thinking that you have more slanted almond shaped eyes. Whereas if you do your eyeliner over your entire eyelid, it's going to look like more round. It's going to look more like your natural kind of eye shape. So. We're gonna move on and do the rest of the face. Now that we're snatched here, we need to finish getting snatched everywhere else. First thing I'm gonna do is jump in with the bronzer. I'm using my Fenty Islanding bronzer. This is so beautiful and sun-kissed and it just looks like you've been on a tropical island holiday. Just tap that onto my cheekbones. I always put a little bit on my nose, but not, not like too much. So that's like all the bronzing I'm going to do. And then now I'm going to jump in with blush. Honestly, my favorite part. I just feel like this ties everything together, especially the eyes. The blush that I'm loving at the moment is the NARS blush in the shade Gina. So I just take a fair bit and then I'm going from like the apple of the cheek and blending backwards. And anytime I go too far into the center of my face, I just take my foundation brush and tap over it. I always take a little bit of blush on my nose, my chin and my forehead because I feel like it just like ties everything together. I like to do that matte blush and then I go in with MAC Warm Salt and I put this on as like a blush topper. I feel like it just adds like such a beautiful shimmer to the cheeks. And then one of my new favorite highlights to use at the moment, I just started trying this out the other day and I really love the look of it. it makes your skin look really glowy and like wet. So if you don't love like a wet look highlight, you might not like this, but I personally prefer a wet look to like a really intense like shimmer look. So this is the Fenty Matchstick Glow Skin Stick in the shade Pearl. I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger and just tap it onto higher points of the face, just anywhere where you would apply like powder highlight. I just think it's so pretty. Look at that. I look so do it. So I'm going to do a little bit of mascara now. I don't like to do too much on the lower lash line, but I just feel like this look is really complemented by having a little bit of mascara on your lower lashes. So I'm just taking my Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir Mascara. Just making sure all my lashes are coated. You guys can see the difference between the two eyes. Totally up to you what you prefer. I feel like this eye does look more cat eye but once i brush this off and show you guys like how i put the mascara on it's mostly just to add a little bit of definition so you can see that i have bottom lashes so i just apply it on there and then i take a little lash spoolie that i use to brush my lashes brush off the tips of the mascara i mean hopefully you can see a difference these are like more spider lashes whereas these are more like just kind of defines the shape of your eye i just feel like it's a really soft and subtle way 
to enhance your lashes and look like you still have lashes while still keeping like the fox eye kind of shape. I'm going to do my lips. I always like to scrub my lips before I go in with anything because my lips are crusty as hell. So this is the Ulla Henriksen Lucky Pucker Lip Scrub. It's not like the most abrasive lip scrub. It's pretty gentle. And then I just take a little cotton around, rub the lip scrub around. I do it mostly to get the dead skin off, also to get any of the um, concealer off because I really don't like the look of like concealer foundation lips at all. And then like a must for me when I'm doing my makeup is to go in with my Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme. Some people say this stings their lips so much. This doesn't sting me at all though. I like don't even feel. It. And I've had some lip plumpers in my palms that have like hurt so bad. In the meantime, I'm just going to set my face. So I'm going to use my all nighter setting spray from Urban Decay. I can't be bothered to wait for that to soak in. I'm just going to tap off the majority of it so it's still plumping them but it's not not like dripping this is the morphe love bite lip liner i like to use my mac what one is it stripped down is like my favorite but i don't know what i've done with it i've lost it these are the bite beauty power move creamy matte lip crayons so this one's amaretto hopefully i'm not allergic to this because i um I was deathly allergic to agave lip mask and then apparently they reformulated it so maybe i'm not now all right guys so that is everything for this video and this is the final look hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something new if it was helpful please let me know in the comments down below also i would like to say that i had the idea to create this video because i made one on tiktok it was just like a fun little silly makeup tutorial so if you guys want to follow me on tiktok it's just casey Rayton, same as my youtube um and my instagram is casey Rayton as well but hopefully you guys head on over there and follow me and we can chat um and yeah that's it for this video so thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next one